What is up you guys, this is All Day Any Day 1 on the PS4 and I'm going to be giving you another Red Dead Redemption 2 online video. And with this video I'm going to be talking about things that I think should be implemented and changed. And I know that this is a beta, but you know, still there's always room for improvement and whatnot for the actual full release. So I'll be playing a couple terrible showdown matches and whatnot in the background as well, which doesn't really relate to what I'm going to be talking about. But anyways, let's go ahead and start with this video. So first things first is your ability loadouts. So I think with the ability loadouts, it would be really useful and important because all abilities work best in certain situations. So you'll have certain abilities that work great for PvP, certain abilities that work really great for PvE. And with PvP, you generally want something that helps you with your headshot immunity and just taking less damage from, you know, just from bullets and whatnot. While PvE, you generally want something that can help you build your health back up. Because NPCs generally don't aim for your head, they're just shooting at you. Sometimes they'll get you in the head, but most of the time they're shooting at you, so you want to be able to heal yourself. So having the ability to switch your ability cards, or just switching your ability cards in general is annoying right now. Because you have to go back to your menu, and then it takes kind of a long time to switch the abilities around. So I think having the power to actually just have loadouts for your abilities would be really 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 useful also there are some issues with um, like a certain ability called the never never without one where it basically makes you immune to headshot damage as long as you have a hat on but sometimes when you get the headshot off of you and then you die sometimes you don't spawn with your hat so you have to switch your abilities so having another PvP loadout would be really useful just in case of that type of situation occurs. Uh, just because with that ability, when you lose your hat, you you become it becomes a useless ability because you take more damage without a hat in general. But anyways, I think having ability loadouts would be really, really, really useful. So the next thing I'd like to see in the future is to also be able to change your character's full appearance, even if it costs you like 5 gold bars or $100 or something, I think it would be nice to have the option to change your character's look. Because I know there's a lot of people, <coughs> there's a lot of people who out there who made their character just rushing or just didn't know exactly how they wanted to make their character and figured, you know what, I want to make my character look different. So having the option to be able to change your character's look without having to reset your progression is going to be really useful. The next thing I'm hopeful for, and I'm pretty sure it'll happen, but you know, I'll be hopeful anyways, is more missions that have a decent to a good payout, meaning $10 to $15 or so at average with a good XP payout as well. So like, I guess 200 or 400 XP per mission, depending on how long the mission is, whatever and how difficult the mission is I think it would be a pretty good you know I think it'd be pretty nice plus having extra difficulties as well added to it would be really really fun I think in my opinion would be really fun it would be more of a challenge for players who enjoyed doing PvE aspects of the game rather than just having to do only PvP just like in GTA Online how they had different difficulties set but the higher your difficulty was whoops the higher your difficulty was set the more rewards you were given, like your XP and money and whatnot, was you were given more of that. And then, you know, I think like the best way it would go is you could have like an extreme difficulty that gives you 2.5 times more XP and money. Hard mode rewards would give you 1.5 times more XP and money. And then normal would just be the same at one times. And then easy would reduce the rewards down to 0.75 times XP and money. So I think that would be pretty, pretty, pretty awesome. Next is a quick weapon switch. The reason why I'm saying they should add this is because a lot of times when you're switching weapons while you're under attack or everything's just going really fast, you sometimes switch to the wrong weapon and then like if you're trying to switch to a shotgun and it's on the bottom wheel, you end up accidentally using the lasso or you'll use a bomb or a knife or something that is not a shotgun and then you end up getting killed because of that split second. So I think the way they could implement this is being able to favorite your weapons. So you can favorite up to two weapons or three or yeah, just two. I wouldn't say just two weapons. 
and then all you have to do is just tap L2 or L1, whichever one it is for your um, your your weapon wheel or whatever it's called. So I think that will be a really useful tactic or little just something that's that would be good to input in the game implement just being able to tap that and then you'll be able to have your um what's called shotgun up as soon as you tap the l2 now for the showdown series it's there's not much that is wrong with it the only thing that i find really annoying is the blimps because when you're doing large showdown series you'll have teams of eight or eight different teams sometimes not all the time like if you're doing hostile territory sometimes it's just four sometimes it's just you know um, sometimes you'll have eight but team showdowns you generally have two but in things like name your weapon teams or whatever you'll have multiple team you have multiple different teams that are generally the same or very close in the same color like there is a light blue and a regular blue which when you're running about you're not really paying attention to how dark the color is or how light the color is you're just looking at the color and then just with that instant second you could get killed because you you couldn't tell the difference by the colors which is a little unfortunate i mean it's happened to me a lot i've ran next to someone who like i was a light blue and he was a dark blue and we were running next to each other for a little bit until I aimed in and with aim assist it snapped onto him and I was like what the f and then I ended up killing him because I didn't realize there was a dark blue team in the game and um, you know it's not just the blue it's not just blues but it's also red and orange or pink and purple it's just a, all these different colors except for yellow and green yellow and green are the only two that are easily able to be distinguished um, from the other colors so I hopefully they could end up I guess enhancing the color scheme of these so making it to where the um, dark blue is actually really dark blue and light blue is very turquoise type I guess and whatnot just making the making the colors a lot more noticeable or they could just take the extra colors out and then just add players to the extra team so another thing that I think they should add in the free roam is a wanted level so for those players who enjoy doing grieving should have some type of I guess consequence for going about killing other players now I don't really care if there's grievers too much or not necessarily grievers but players killing other players there is an issue with grieving but you know I think if they added a wanted level making it to where other players have a, more of an incentive to killing the grievers because they'll know where the grievers are because they'll have a wanted level on them I think would be really useful and and I keep saying really useful but you know I think it'd be interesting to have something like that and the wanted their wanted level will increase based off of how many players they've killed or you know how many lawmen they've killed no, I wouldn't say NPCs I think that's completely separate but with players I think it should depend on how many times you've killed a player like over and over or how many times you've killed multiple players so the higher it'll higher your want to level is the higher the bounty would be and I think the bounty should ink just cap out to like maybe 50 bucks or something because that would be an easy way to exploit it if you kill if someone had killed up to enough players to have up to like a thousand dollar bounty someone kills them like a friend and then you know they that's easy money so I guess that could be exploitable but I think it would be pretty interesting on having a bounty system as well so there should also definitely be more ways of earning honor rather than having to replay the first three missions fishing hunting and doing your series missions because they don't give that much and it can fishing and hunting can get really boring series missions I don't mind but I think what would be really cool is if they could you know add NPCs random NPCs around the world where you can just help while you're riding around with your horse just like in the story mode how you help the lady get to her home or you can take the you can suck the snake venom out of the dude's leg or whatever I think that adding those would be cool to have to build up your honor would be you know and then also helping another player complete their missions if you're not part of their posse or anything you just go by and help them with their mission or helping another player if they're being killed by other players so if a posse or just some other player has killed someone and then you killed that player that killed them 
that would build your honor up. I think those would be really cool because I mean technically you're not that doesn't really make sense on why you would get it, um, dishonorable. I mean it counts as being dishonorable because you murdered someone, but I think that shouldn't count. In my opinion, it shouldn't count because you're 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 taking revenge, I guess, in that in that type of sense. Or you're avenging the dude. Up next is going to be adding a trapper. So I'm pretty certain that they will be adding a trapper sometime later on. But you know, just or just anything that really allows you to craft something out of your pelts. And I think what would be awesome with these, with this, is these craftable pelts or not craftable pelts, but these items that you use to craft with the pelts would give you some type of stat bonus to you know like. Headshot damage, well not headshot damage, um, to like melee attack speed or reload speed, increasing your accuracy, increasing movement speed, or increasing your bullet resistance, explosives, hunger, your core stays higher, or you know, just all these different up, um, elements or whatever would be really, really nice to have, I think. At least to me, I think it's because I'm more of a person that likes or enjoys RPG aspects in games. So having these type of different quote unquote builds and whatnot or gear would be pretty awesome. And then the stronger the pelts are, like if you have a three star pelt and then you were you you used it in the trapper or whatever, it would give you a higher bonus. And I think adding this would give other players more of an incentive to actually craft or not craft, but to go hunt and whatnot. I think that would be pretty... I, I would certainly go hunting more often. I rarely ever go hunting at all in this game. I've I've gone hunting a few times until they um, kind of nerfed hunting. But I never really hunted that much. I think I would hunt way more often if they added something like this. So another thing I want to add is having or implementing passive modes and having frame sessions as well as private sessions and aim assist sessions. And I know they're going to end up adding this eventually because they have this in GTA Online. But the thing is, they had passive modes right away on GTA. And I I mean, I guess in a sense, this is the Wild West. And you don't necessarily, you, I mean, having passive mode is kind of a whatever. But I think having passive mode would be fine for people who just want to go about their own business. Hunting, fishing, doing their own thing. But, um with the private sessions and aim assist sessions as well as the free aim sessions that definitely needs to be something added to the game asap in my opinion it needs to be added because you have players who want to use free aim but are kind of reverted to going back into aim assist because everyone else is using aim assist like myself i'm using aim assist i have no shame in using aim assist i really don't care but you do have players who want to have that skill gap of being able to use aim assist, I mean free aim, versus the people who are using aim assist and whatnot. And if you're using free aim, you generally are put at a disadvantage against most free aimers, unless you're at a far distance out of their, um, out of their aim assist range. But, you know, I think they, they just need to add this pretty, pretty quick. And now for the last thing I want to talk about is something I'd like to see that I think would be pretty interesting is to have a trading system. So not being able to trade your weapons or anything, but being able to trade things like food, herbs, ammo, tonics, pelts, and other sort of accessories would, I think would be pretty cool. You know, just being able to trade with your friends or just random players, selling to random players and whatnot, three-star pelts, that's what would make it to where having the, the trapper system that I was talking about earlier would make it more useful with the trading. You can sell three-star pelts to other players and whatnot. And then I think the best trading places would be, like, if they, they could end up creating, like, a trading post or something. And uh, players can go there and trade with each other. And this would be, I guess, put into every every city. And or they can just, you know, trade in their camps where they're safe. They can't get shot at and um, or saloons or whatever. And if they're in a mission and they need to trade ammo or tonics or whatever, you can just trade in there as well. Oh, and another thing before I completely forget is something that they definitely need to fix is in the showdowns menu and the PVE menu 
is the fact that when you're trying to buy ammo, you are set to the team lock-in timer. And that has about, I'm pretty sure it's 30 seconds. But, you know, if you're looking at your scoreboard and whatnot and you're not paying attention to it, that once that timer is done, you cannot buy ammo, you cannot change your weapon loadout, you cannot change anything. Which is unfortunate, especially if you have no ammo, so you have to be quick about it. I think something they need to change with that is they need to make it to where the ammo is, you know, that the weapon ammo purchase and the weapon loadout is completely separate from that. As well as adding ability card loadouts in the menu as well, so you can change it around when you know, since you know what game mode you're going to be playing. But back to the trading, I think this would be, a, you know, I think it would be helpful for a ton of players being able to sell them items or buy items from other players the only thing is you wouldn't be able to buy clothing no weapons and you can only use the in-game cash you can't use the gold bars i think this would be i, I would be 100 percent for it and um yeah honestly that's pretty much it i think um that's pretty much yeah that's pretty much it if this helps you at all go and leave a like comment subscribe if you have any other suggestions you'd like to throw out put that down in the comment section and yeah, that's pretty much it. This is all day anything one on the PS4. Have a good day, good night, and peace.